Yeah, so this is a, quite a bit of a different workshop from the, from the last two. Um, we don't have, unfortunately, we don't have a final workshop report to distribute to everyone today. Uh, still, still in draft form. Uh, some of you who actually were at the workshop have, uh, have a copy of the draft at this point uh, to help with the discussion. So there's a, there's a pro problem which I think is widely recognized, which is that uh, without enough functional information about genes, uh, it becomes very difficult to interpret almost any result that you can get, any single result, any association result, any sequencing result. Uh, transcriptional, from transcriptional data, anything implicating uh, a, a gene for any kind of experimental study. 80% uh, of genes have no experimental process annotation, and this is really critical. Lack of a framework for interpreting any individual implication of a gene uh, is an impediment for moving uh, to biological understanding and to translation. <clears throat> There's another way of looking at this. Um, this is a just a schematic, a cartoon of the gap between variation and phenotype. And it's actually taken from an, from an old figure. You saw, uh, you, you've seen other newer figures illustrating the various categories of research we have and, and programs we have and how much we invest in them. This is taken from kind of an outmoded view of that, but it, it does make the point that we, we fund a lot of functional genomics. Um, and it's stuck somewhere here between variation, this gap between variation and phenotype. But the problem is that while we all talk to each other and we're all aware of each other, the information from this, these studies and from other studies that we don't fund, uh, others fund, uh, is not integrated and, and we don't have a good handle on what's really useful, a useful way to integrate it. We don't have a good handle on uh, what data are more useful than other data for, uh, for biological and translational interpretation. So that's what this workshop is about, uh, just to discuss some of these ideas. So what kind of a, what kind of a framework sh could they be organized into? Uh, should capture and integrate functional data about genes and all the elements that regulate them. Should certainly include different kinds of functional information. Uh, we see we fund a lot of molecular information, molecular functional information about, uh, about genes and related functional elements in the genome, for example, in code. Um, we do a bit less of uh, getting pa process pathway and partner data, but there is some, for example, the Common Fund Initiative called LINX. And ideally, we would want to include functional information about dynamics, a cell tissue context, genetic background, et cetera. Again, it should provide a way of understanding what data are more useful. And this notion of utility came up a number of times in the workshop for specific interpretations, so for translation or for understanding biological mechanisms. Um, what data to include and what level of detail should be evaluated with regard to utility towards these functions. And it was suggested that to begin, again, this is just a proposal, to begin at least one functional attribut attribution supported by high quality evidence for all genes and elements. Another aspect, another aspect of, uh, of a framework that would be successful would uh, to help inform priorities for adding new data types. So if you really had a handle on this, you could look at each successive data type that was added and think about, did it, did it really add enough value? Or you could look at pilot, pilot data and say, is this really going to add to our ability to interpret these data? So there might be some way to get out of this, uh, a way to uh, inform priorities for adding new data types. And as you know, we come to you with, uh, with ideas about adding new data types all the time. Um, there are various ways you could imagine this could be done. And this is, this is one idea that came out of the workshop. You could have four elements. And these, I'm not making any statements about whether these four elements end up as separate funded, uh, separate funded initiatives. That's for the future. Um, but you would need four elements. One integrated, get sort of gathered up, aggregated, and in, begin to integrate existing functional data. The other function would be to evaluate uh, and evaluate the data and identify missing information. Uh, another component uh, would be to generate experimental data. And finally, a, f a final component, you have to know what quality you have of, the d of these data and gather data. You have to know what quality this, uh, the, data, the data are uh, for interpreting uh, um, 
biological and um, and maybe translational results. And you have so you have to so have some kind of modeling activity essentially as validation. It's difficult to summarize a workshop that had, I think, this many um, thoughts flying around, because this is a huge area, um, without leaving out other views. And I have definitely left out other views. And I just want to want to summarize, too, that I heard pretty clearly. There were certainly others that I think play, play into the scheme that was just out, outlined, and outlined, but a couple that, that don't really fit. Uh, and the first is, if you're interested in understanding the biology underlying complex disease, uh, you need to know about physiology uh, rather than gene function and pathways. There, there are a lot of different ideas wrapped up in that objection. Um, uh, and I think uh, all of us would sort of disentangle them in a, a slightly different way. But I think one of the most straightforward ways is to say before you can get to physiology, you have to know a lot about the function of individual genes. Or it's much easier to get to physiology if you, if you have that prior information. A second kind of objection that I heard was that a framework like this is too vague, and we really should just pick something, um, something uh, a specific project and do it. Um, so for example, to understand how variation relates to phenotype, we should begin with actual human variation and just look at the resulting molecular phenotypes instead of trying to do this on a, do this for all genes or on a very broad-based way. So again, just to reiterate, what would success look like? Uh, it would be a well-validated community resource of integrated functional data across multiple data types assessed for quality and utility. It would allow rapid interpretation for any result implicating a gene or gene regulatory element. Uh, would allow more rapid insight into biological processes. In some cases, uh, would allow more rapid identification of points of intervention for disease. And within NHGRI, would provide a strategic context for the functional geno genomics programs that we undertake. And with that, I'd like to thank all the members of the planning working, uh, planning working group, including Lisa, Shyla, Elise, uh, Tina, Gatlin, Peter Good, Mike Pazin, Ajay, Chris Wetterstan, and Anastasia Weiss. And before going to general discussions, I'd like to ask some of the folks that were there uh, if they have any comments, especially uh, Carlos. Um. So I thought it was a, a really great meeting in that it opened up my eyes to how many different ways one could interpret genotype to phenotype. And it really ran all the way from people who thought it meant we need to come up with a function for every gene in the human genome to we need to be able to create a resource to return results to clinical investigators and everything in between. I mean, it really was that broad. And so one of the comments that, you know, several of us made there was that it would be great to see this better articulate a vision that integrates with the roadmap, and in, in particular how it relates to the transition from studying the biology of genomes to studying the biology of disease. Um, so, you know, I think there, there were a lot of great ideas, but going forward and thinking about sort of flat budgets, how to integrate that, and ideally how it might integrate with existing projects like Thousand Genomes and GTech and ENCODE and the kind of unifying role something like this might potentially play. Yes. Yes, yeah, so I, I had a similar reaction to Carlos. This is a very complex problem. And it was a very heterogeneous group of people, all with very different views, as Carlos points out. And, and we had a hard time, I think, coming to consensus on just about every issue that was discussed. Um, I, I do think that, in retrospect, that um, makes me think that trying to tie this more specifically to a more targeted problem or use case, or I think one of your slides mentioned that at the end, might help to frame the initiative in a, in a, in a better way that indeed, right, I walked out of there feeling that things were just too diffuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it was, a, uh, it was also just the, the initial 
work document that they circulated was just, you know, it was a Roshark test. You would read into it what you wanted to exactly. read into it. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, that's why I think somehow to come up with a, a more targeted. But I think it's also just really critically important, right? Yeah. I mean, I oh, think, no, you know, we if we want to go that. down that yeah. roadmap and be returning results to people on iPads, like what results are we going to return yeah. back? And yeah. this is really yeah. kind of critical to making that happen. I mean, we all agreed that it was critically important and we all had a somewhat different view of what, what it was, was important. that <laughs> was important. Yeah. Yeah, Ross. Yeah, so the, 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 the suggestion that we try a pilot, a focused pilot project, that, you know, that actually, uh, that came up. <coughs> and there were some things proposed, you know, kind of as straw dogs. And, you know, it was Katie barred the door. I mean, it was, uh, uh, it, 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 it's, it's very hard to settle in on that pilot. But having said that, I, you know, I'm just join in with everyone else saying, yes, this is, we all recognize it's critically important and uh, we need to find a way forward. I, I think that the pilot project uh, is a good idea to clarify uh, what could actually be done within this, but it's going to be difficult. But they still have to do it. Mike? I was just going to agree with what's been said and, and, and suggest that what this means is not that we wait a while to have another meeting. I think this is a place where a series of meetings, perhaps with different specific foci, but along the same general thread, is, is really important because this, this is where we need to go. Uh, and this is where NHGRI is uniquely positioned to lead. And the fact that it's hard to get there doesn't mean people aren't doing a good job. It means it's just hard and nonetheless extremely important. So, so getting people together multiple times in relative short order, uh, I think is probably important. Rick? I, I agree with, uh, I didn't get to attend. I wish I, I, could, I could have, but I couldn't. Uh, I agree with what Mike is just saying. I think this is a really important function. And um, I, I get the message that, it, that there were a lot of people from different backgrounds and, and it was hard, hard to focus it. But it doesn't do away with the problem. It is such an important problem that we're generating all these different data sets, and ENCODE being just one of, of, of many of those, as well as the rest of the community. And right now, if you want to use it, 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 essentially you're talking about how do you interpret the genome, right? And, how, and it's not just variation. It's where proteins bind. It's where, you know, epigenetic changes happen, and, and, uh, et cetera. And more than that, but which, which of those kinds of data adds most value for our ability to translate? Perfect. And, and, and I think that um, the hard part, maybe this is what was shown at the meeting, too, is that you're really having to integrate a bunch of different ways of looking. And I, I like the physiology argument in the sense that you want to combine it with that. But we are a genome institute that would figure out how to take genomic information and mesh it with that. So I, I like the idea that you do multiple things because th this is one, of, I think it's one of the most important things that the institute could do. Yes. I'm, I'm also sorry I missed this meeting because it sounds like it was a doozy. Um, well, I, I, it, so, it sounds to me like one of the fundamental issues here is that you have to have a session where everyone agrees on a definition of function for that part of the meeting. I mean, function could be anything from what does a non-coding piece of DNA do to what does a protein do to what happens when you alter a gene in one way or the other and what kind of phenotype does it produce. Different people define function different ways, and, and they are very different ways of, of defining it, but I think it's still perfectly not only valuable but um, uh, incredibly important to uh, have that discussion around uh, at least temporary definitions. Everyone would agree, all right, for this part, we're going to call function this, and then go ahead. Then, all right, but now for this part, we'll call function that, and then have the discussion. Carlos. I, I think having attended the June meeting on data integration that Mike and, and Lisa and Wiley led, and having attended this other meeting, it was really clear that what made the first meeting a, a really great success in my mind is that we had really crisp documents going in and goals about what we wanted to talk about and what we wanted to accomplish by the end. And I felt 
you know, that it was a really productive use of everybody's time. I felt like it was it was not just another meeting at NIH where you're just going to, you know, who knows what's going to come out of it, right? I thought it was a, a really important meeting, and I felt that a lot of ideas got crystallized by having everybody come, come together. Um, whereas I think the second one, to me, really opened up my eyes to a lot of the complexity and perception that different folks have. And at the end, I just felt more confused as I left than I was going in. And, and I think, you know, that's why I think we do need, you know, another meeting, but not necessarily with the same group, maybe with a subgroup or, you know, or, or a set of meetings that have a crisper agenda and what we hope to get out at the end. All right. So, so the two meetings are, I was involved in, in both data aggregation in this one, and I, I agree with you, uh, but I think that this one had the problem that Bob just described uh, quite well, which is what, what definition of function is really important here? And I think, that's very, I think that's very hard, because if you talk to a bunch of smart people, you'll get a, a bunch of good answers. So. I think we can still have a very practical meeting with saying, you know, if the goal, for example, is to better annotate existing GWAS catalogs using functional data. Okay, if let's say that we want to have a, a particular sub meeting on that. I think we would have gotten a different set of results than um, if the goal was how do we best use computational models to make better experiments that we can use to improve computational models. And that was one of the things that to me, it was you know those two discussions were happening at the same time, and they were kind of cross talking, and it just it was unclear. Like, okay, what do we want to get out of this at the end? The, I don't, you know. No, I All right. If there are no more comments, thanks very much.